warm welcome back to this new podcast series from BMW where we explore electric myths. I'm your host for this episode, I'm Charlie Martin and I'm a racing driver and I'm joined by my co-host sat here next to me. Yes, I'm Tommy, uh, I review cars and talk about tech online because that's what I love and uh, I'm sat in a beautiful car at the minute, this is the i4 which is an all electric car from BMW, it's an amazing car and we're also here at BMW Velt which is an amazing location, if you come to Munich you have to pay a visit, you have to come visit and check out some of the electric cars here and just mingle and look around. Yeah, absolutely. We've uh, spent a great time here. We've uh, also had some good meals here too. So <laughs> as Tommy says, definitely worth checking out if yeah. you're a fan of BMW. They or do amazing car reverse. There we go. <laughs> no higher recommendation can you find. So Tommy, for this episode, we're going to delve into whether electric vehicles are worse for the climate than combustion engine vehicles. Yeah. And this is an interesting one, really. It's not the most straightforward myth to try and unravel in the first instance. Um, uh, what, what are your thoughts straight away? I think, you know, there are so many scepticism when it comes to owning or trying to get into the world of EVs in general, whether it's range, you know, are they fun to drive and are they sustainable, all these things. But I think this one in particular is very grey because um, it's very headline grabbing. So a lot of people are easy to exactly. pick out the, the negative parts, but actually there's so much more to it than we can think that we can easily just, you know, in fact, we don't have enough minutes in this episode to talk <laughs> to fully break it down. But um, I think to make it easier, mm -hmm. like we were saying earlier, is we should present the life cycle of a car, whether it's a combustion engine car or an, an EV, which mm -hmm. is basically you have the production stage and then you have your use phase and then the recycle, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, A, just out of the way, you know, in terms of the amount of CO2 used per kilometer, uh, we're looking at 94 on an EV when you look at everything as a whole versus 241 when you look at your um, combustion engine, right? So it's, you have to put that there first and go, actually, yeah, we're getting somewhere here. But if we go back into the, to the life cycle, production on both vehicles, mm -hmm. you have no choice but to make these things yeah, in the you, factory, like you, you were saying, right? You have to get materials, you have to make a factory, you have to put, put it all together. That's it. Yeah. And in terms of EV, yes, the battery that you're going to put in these cars, mm -hmm. it takes a lot more minerals to get it going, you know, lithium, cobalt and nickels, stuff like that. So you have to get all these raw materials going. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that, that's going to have its, its effect for now. But over time, I think we're in the right direction with different materials that's going to be used over time. It's going to be recycled batteries put back into production mm -hmm. as well. But when we look at both sides, they still have to roll off the line and mm -hmm. there's still going to be energies used. But manufacturers doing a good job now, a better job, um, and using as much as green energy as possible to run the production. Mm -hmm. And then we look at the use phase, yeah. which is where tailpipe emission is much better so that's obviously no brainer better for the environment in that stage. And this is the, this is the interesting thing, isn't it? Because you start with, like you say, you've produced a car, whether it's an EV or a combustion engine car, it rolls off the production line. And at this point in time, the EV, you know, in terms of like the, uh, the effort, the materials, everything used, it, it's, it's falling behind the combustion engine car, but this is the interesting point when you say look at the life cycle because from that point on that ev is is you know especially if you're using green energy mm -hmm. it's having no more emissions that's it for, for whereas for the, your combustion engine car for the rest of that life cycle it's burning fossil fuels that's it that's it and then we look at the recycle phase where mm -hmm. you know the battery in your ev can be recycled take out you know, extract all the, all the raw materials and Not, then the minerals. 95% or something. Right. Yeah. And then you can put that back into production mm -hmm. and off we go again. But your car, yes, you have all this recycled material, you know, on their cars. Mm -hmm. You have all these bits that you can recycle, but it's still not enough to match the level of what you can do with, the, with an EV. Yeah, I think. And that's, that's the interesting one about this, you know, we call it a myth, whatever it is. It, it's a... It's a subject we're delving into, mm -hmm. but it, it's like y you have to kind of look at it. You have to break it down, yeah, don't yeah, you, yeah. to really you have to look start at the to wider, try to understand. Bigger picture. It's not a yes or no answer. No, no, it's not. It's not as black and white as you might want to try and conclude on this one. I don't think. And mm. I think this is more of a discussion and education piece more than a mm. myth busting episode because yeah, there's, there are bits and there nuances that you have to still look at. But I think on the long run. The wider picture is the, having an EV is still better for us towards this goal that we were trying to aim for, which is a better climate. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's all, there's all other kind of things you can throw in there, like, you know, having clean air in our cities. 
you know, is, is an EV better for the climate or worse for the climate? Well, if you're talking about living in a city, the majority of cars driving around that city are EVs, mm -hmm. then you've got clean. clean air. Yeah. So it, it, it's a little bit more nuanced, isn't mm. it? Absolutely, absolutely yeah. agree. I mean, living in London, going down Oxford Street, <laughs> you don't realise how much mm. emissions coming out of tailpipes until they're reduced, how many cars can go down it. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, when you when, every time you come out of London, you always have this big sigh breath. Like, you just like, you just breathe in fresh air. I come to Munich, I'm like, give me some of those fresh air. And so like, before I go back to London, I have to breathe it all in again, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, it's definitely in a step in the right direction. Uh, it's making big difference in the way we live. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to try and summarize everything we've just talked about. I mean, fundamentally, it's been fascinating. It's been really interesting to actually try and unravel this one. And I, I think actually an important point to, to say before we go any further is that you know, whether you're a factory, a manufacturer, whatever, producing an EV or a petrol car or a diesel car, you, you, know, you still have that obligation to try and reduce your climate uh, impact, your, your carbon footprint and everything in terms of, yeah, you know, the, the energy that you're using, using more renewables, the suppliers that you work with, you know, checking that they're also doing everything they can within their grasp mm -hmm. to try and be become more climate friendly. So it's, it's really a case of a much, much bigger picture, right? And I think as a brand, you need to come up with your own uh, brand culture, which is stuff you live by to make sure that everyone across the brand, whether it's the person working at the desk all the way to engineers, to mm -hmm. person delivering the cars, you all have to buy by the same culture. Like BMW have the, the four pillars, which is rethink, reuse, reduce and recycle. I think those four pillars are really important. And if all the brands have similar focus, mm -hmm. the future's bright. It's all about being sustainable, isn't it? That's it. And embracing that closed loop process. That's it. That's it. Brilliant. Folks, I think we've learned a lot in this episode and I'm looking forward to the next. If you want to follow this podcast, if you want to comment, if you want to like it, if you want to share it with your friends, then uh, please do it now and keep listening because we've got a lot more information to tell you all about in the coming episodes. See you then. See you soon.